first stage of assembly, take the right hand panel, fit it up to the main body. We're using temporary rivets in this, known as Clecos, which are the gold things you can see standing up. You've got one flange, two flange, three flanges to connect. Pop rivet those on first, then use the joining pieces. These are colour coordinated, the stickers on the inside. Make sure the panels are tight up against each other, so it's worth holding them together before you actually pop rivet. Make sure there's no gaps in there. Pop rivet that side panel on first, and when that's completed, then it's really moving on to fitting the sump. The sump's been pre-sealed for you already. So again, it's more a case of just offering it up. And then pop rivet in all the way around the edge. You've got holes all the way around the edge of it to pop rivet. Once the sump's been pop riveted in place, then it's simply a case of bolting the legs on. So you've got four legs, four joining pieces. The legs are fairly self-explanatory. They only fit one way. On here, on yours, you'll have the emergency stop switch with a cable that just pins around the back. The front brace has the letters cut out of it. You can see the left and the right braces have a straight back and an angled front. Then the back brace is the small one down at the bottom. Bolt all of those in. Once all of those are in place and tightened up, final stage is then fitting the door seal so the seal join at the top of the door ideally when you come to fit this the seal will seem to be very long it'll seem to be about an inch inch and a bit longer than what it looks like it needs to be the rubber contracts over time so the best way to do is to force them together the edges together and then try and pop the seal up into position and you'll find that the seal will fit it'll be very very tight and it'll feel like it's too long but over time you won't end up with a contraction and a gap it'll stay the same there once the door seal's fitted which is just literally a case of popping it on we then come to the door itself you've got two hinges that simply pop rivet onto the body there and there Pop rivet the small piece of the hinge. So this section, pop rivet that onto the door. You've got the bolts that pop through that just hold it onto the, the other section of the hinge. You've got two of these hinges in the kit. You've got one with straight holes and one with elongated holes. The way we suggest is the straight holes, pop rivet those onto the bottom of the door. Close the door with the catch. Align the catch, so move the door up so it aligns properly. And then when you're looking at the catch, ideally you want that a couple of mil higher up. So whereas that's lined up there, ideally you want it to the top edge of the catch. And then you can come up to this hinge, which is a standard one on, on our demo model here, but you have the elongated holes on yours. Pop rivet that hinge in place once you've got the catch lined up. That way, by allowing the catch to be a couple of mil higher, it'll allow for the weight of the door pulling down once you've pop riveted that hinge in place. So pop rivet the main part of the hinge to the body of the cabinet first, pop the bolts in, pop rivet the bottom hinge on, align the catch and then move it slightly higher. So tilting the, board, the door backwards slightly, then pop rivet the top catch in place. And that'll give you the catch all nicely lined up. <laughs> the catch just bolts on to the door and bolts onto the frame. There are three spacers that go behind the catch there. So you need to make sure you put those spacers in before you bolt that on. And then this needs adjusting to the fully out position on there. The window, fairly self-explanatory, it's already fitted. All you need to do is run around the edge with a sharp knife. Very light pressure, just run around the edge of the seal, then you can peel the protective layer off. Gauntlet holders, you've got two of these in the toolbox. They just pop in, very tight fit. And then the longer of the rivets that you've got in the tool kit, fasten these two onto the front of the machine. 
So all of the bodywork panels use the shorter rivets, which is the bigger bag of rivets inside the, the box. The gauntlets use the longer rivets because of the thickness of the plastic that you're attaching to the metal work. You've got a double-sided tape around the edge of this gauntlet in the kit that's supplied to you. You've got two big gloves. Simple way of fitting them is take the coating off the double-sided tape, put the glove in, making sure that the fingers are leveled. You don't want to fit the glove like that or an angle. So pop the glove through and then you're peeling the glove around and sticking it to the tape. The purpose of the tape is really just to hold it in place until you can get the metal Jubilee clip on. You've got two big Jubilee clips in the kit. So once you've folded the, the inside of the glove, whole glove goes inside and then it folds over and sticks. That gives you that area then to slide the Jubilee clip on and tighten up. Once they're in place, there's pretty much most of the cabinet put together. What you've got coming around the back, you've got a tray that holds the electric cabinet in place. Yours will have pre-fitted blind rivets. So what they call riv nuts, which are captive nuts. All you've got to do is open the lid on the electric cabinet and bolt the electric cabinet to that tray and then pop rivets it to the back of here. You've also got a cover that just slots in and folds down two bits of foam and then you've got three these are little captive roof nuts you've got three of these across the bottom just pop your bolts in there fasten your filter in place the hole here is for the pipe to come out for the pump the hole here is the bulkhead fitting for the air supply into the machine for the gun and the hole up here is for the light these holes these two holes, the one from the sump for the pump and the one for the light have been made big enough to get the electrical connectors through that are pre-wired onto the end. The simplest way of sealing these holes when you've got the wire fed through is literally just to get a piece of old sponge, cut it to a strip, wrap it around the wire and then force it into the hole. The sponge will stop any uh, spray contaminants or anything coming back out of the cabinet. Mm. The control panel is pre-wired. There's a sticker on the face of it. It tells you what all the fittings on the side of it relate to. Make sure that you connect each one to the correct fittings. That's absolutely crucial. So if you look at the legend logo on the front of the control cabinet, there's a sticker on there pointing to which socket relates to which item. You've essentially got an emergency stop button which plugs in. You've got a foot pedal that plugs in, you've got a solenoid valve that plugs in, you've got a pump that plugs in and a light. Make sure you get them all in the right connections. This hole here is the bulkhead fitting. You've got a big piece, uh, two piece fitting in the kit. It's in with the uh, spray gun, comes apart. You want the push fitting for the pipe on the outside and the uh, barb fitting on the inside. The outside has 8mm blue pipe down to the regulator, which bolts on down here. Mm. So you've got holes in the leg down there for the regulator. You've got the air feed coming into the regulator. You have the regulator, you then have a short male to male connection, which connects the regulator to the solenoid, and then you have a push fitting on the outside. So it's air feed in, regulator, male to male fitting, solenoid, Make sure you fit the solenoid the right way around. There is an arrow on the bottom of it. This arrow wants to be pointing outwards flow. And then you've got the push fitting on the outside. You then have the short blue pipe comes around and in to the push fitting on the back of here. You're then coming back round inside the machine. What you'll have when you're finished is you'll have a barb fitting in here you want to connect the shorter of the two clear hoses to. You have your pump sat in the bottom that you want to connect the longer of the two hoses to. When you put your trays in the bottom of the machine, there's three trays supplied. One tray has a hole in the centre, a large hole in the centre. That's for the big pipe to come up through. So the big clear pipe comes up through there, 
around the side, meets up with the other one and comes around the front. You've then got a central tray that has a flange bent on both sides and a big hole to one side. The big hole is to be able to put your finger in so you can pull the tray up and out. That sits in the middle. Then the third tray slots in at the front. All of the inside of the cabinet, you can see is reasonably well sealed. Obviously a lot of the bent metal is all out of one sheet of material. There are the joints, however, as you can see there, there's a hole there, there's a hole in the top corner, wherever you've got the flange pieces. We simply recommend just run around quickly with a silicon gun and seal all of these joints before starting. It's much, much easier to do it before you start and put water in the cabinet than it is once it's been wet. So just run around all the seals, all the edges with silicon, just seal the edges. Again, you've got a small section at the top of that, just run a bead of silicon round. It's the same at the top front edge of that there, just bead of silicon down, you should be fine. We suggest pop riveting the base on from the inside of the cabinet. If you want the top of the rivet head on the inside, don't do it from the outside because you need this layer to be nice and smooth and flat so that the trays can sit on top. You don't want rivet bottoms sticking up proud through it. Um, once that's all in and bolted together, you've got your trays in, you've got your pipes coming through, your air feed for your pipe comes out of there, off a barb fitting with a Jubilee clip, comes around, that goes straight into the back of the nozzle. Hmm? The angle fitting from the bottom of the gun is the one from the pump, which will sit in down here. Mm. So that's the simplest way of connecting the pump together. We've got black tape over these holes at the moment, but you have three holes in the sump, one there, one there, and one down here. You'll have three black plastic adapters with a screw thread and six big metal washers in the toolkit. Put a metal washer on the black plastic adapter, put that through from the inside, so you're popping it through with a big head on the inside, thread on the outside, then you've got three taps supplied in the kit. Put a big washer on the outside and screw the tap on until it's tight. It's worthwhile bedding those washers on a little bit of silicon, just to try and get a perfect seal. The bottom drain is obviously to drain everything off. The next drain up is just to drain down to the water. So basically your beads should sit just below that in the bottom. And then the top one is just to drain off the top sort of half an inch of water out of the machine. The machine is designed to run from about 12 kilos of media and about 25 liters of water. So as you use the machine, the top of the water will get a bit of scum on it over time. You can simply open the top valve and just drain that off and then pour some fresh water in. The bottom valve is if you want to replace all of the water, draining all the water off but leaving the beads in, the media. And then the very bottom valve, which sits at the side of the pump in the floor, is to drain everything off. So that's beads and everything into a, a tub that you could have sat on the floor. That's pretty much the assembly of the cabinet. It looks daunting when you get it because you get this great big crate full of what looks like 101 items but it's actually fairly straightforward fit the side panel first fit the corner pieces make sure the metal's nice and tight together before using the pop rivets so you don't end up with any big gaps between things fit the door seal the door seal will seem too long it isn't just try and force it into place and it will fit hang the hinges at the back first onto the cabinet pop the bolts in, pop rivet the bottom one on, close the door up and obviously you've got the brush metal effect on the outside. Clip it in, lift it up and then get it a touch higher, another couple of millimetres higher, pop rivet the top hinge in and then it should hang in the perfect position. Gauntlet holders, pop rivet all of those on using the longer rivets. Peel the tape off for the backing, put the glove in, make sure the hands are the right way around and nice and level. Peel it back, stick it on. The tape just makes it easier because without the tape on, you're trying to get it to stay on there. And when you get this side on, this side comes off. 
sticking it on just holds it in place makes life a lot lot easier big jubilee clip on tighten up that's your gloves fitted trays we've already been through one at the back has a big hole in the center for the pipe to come up through from the pump middle one has two flanges front one just slot in place bolts in all of the holes for the legs are the same top and bottom now this side is already fitted for you on the machine the tray all you've got to do is bolt the cabinet on the electric cabinet all the wires one wire from the pump through there bit of foam sponge around it force it into the hole seals it nicely same for the light at the top some of the lights when you get them out of the box look like they've been used that's purely a case of every 10 or 15 lamps we take one out of production we test it in one of our demo machines we've got another one over there look we do we, we test them for three or four days make sure that they are waterproof we're not getting any problems then we we'll clean them up and set them out with the units hmm. so don't worry if you've got a light that looks like it's been used it hasn't it's just been in our test unit for a couple of days to ensure that the quality is okay with it hmm. again back panel just pop rivets on where we've got these temporary clecos in at the moment once you pop riveted that on you've got your cable from your lamp that goes in you've got your foot pedal that plugs in you've got your emergency stop emergency stop cable that comes around the machine that plugs in you've got your pump to plug in and your solenoid valve and again just to reiterate you got your fit in here for your solenoid uh, for your regulator you've got a straight in feed push fitting for an eight mil pipe coming into the regulator you've got a male to male connector to go from the regulator to the solenoid the solenoid has an arrow on it that needs to be pointing outwards for the airflow direction. And then you've got a push fitting on the outside of the solenoid. You've got a short blue pipe comes round up and into the bulkhead fitting, which you fitted that's in the kit in two pieces. Blue push fitting on the outside, bar fitting on the inside. When you connect the gun, you've got two lengths of clear reinforced braided pipe. The shorter length goes to the air the longer length goes from the pump. The shorter length air goes straight into the back of the gun. The fluid comes up from the angle port at the bottom of the gun. This, you've got two foam pads you just lay on there. You've got your grid, it's got two hinges, just slot in and fold down. And then you've got your captive room nuts to bolt in there. That's pretty much it from an assembly point of view. You should find, whilst it looks like you've got a lot of work, you should find that you should easily assemble the cabinet within a couple of hours. What we suggest doing, first of all, fit the right hand panel, then fit the tub or the sump to it, and then bolt the legs on. That's by far the simplest way of doing it. We don't tend to find that we need a sealant between the sump and this and the frame. So these two normally just pop rivet together without a sealant but it is worthwhile running up all of the joints around the corners just with a tube of silicon, like bath sealant, just run it around to seal all of those little holes. And that'll just make sure you don't get any leaks coming out of the cabinet when you're using it. And that's pretty much it. Uh, any questions, any problems, just drop us a line by eBay or directly at sales at hydro hyphen therm .co.uk. Any problems, anything missing, give us a shout. We'll send out whatever's needed, but hopefully that'll work fine for you. Thank you very much.